This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hey, everybody. Carm Capriato, Remarkable Results Radio. Good to have you here. It's 2015. We've been rocking and rolling. Wow, you add the Aftermarket Radio Network in there, Travis. We've got a couple of thousand episodes out there, and we haven't missed a beat, and we continue to rock the world with personal and business professionalism and acumen. So yeah, good to have you here. Travis Troy's with us. Thanks for having me again. Hey, always from Honest Wrenches in Acne and Des Moines, Iowa. I always have a problem with Acne. Did I say it Ankeny. right? Acne. Acne and Des Moines. Acne. I got to put the line over the A. Acne. I was going to say acne, but I, geez, I thank God I didn't. This man's been with me a couple of times. We've recorded uh, at Vision when he came in and said, listen, I spent a ton of money. We close our shop. We bring all of our people. And I really enjoyed that episode that we did. So go to the website, remarkablereads.biz, type in Travis Troy and listen to the stuff we've done together. It was sometime in the summer. I was really thinking deep about Travis and what he is going to plan to do for 2023, 2024, as far as the conferences that you're going to bring your people to. And I wanted to help set up for all of our shop owners and technicians. Listen, what does an owner go through as far as to think about who picks the classes? Are there any rules when you go to conferences, drinking, uniforms, language, who goes and who stays back? And that does seniority maybe have a place in the decision of who goes. So those are the kind of things I want to ask Travis as we rock here through the, what I'm going to call conference planning and the value for the entire team. So how do you determine once, say, for example, the vision list of the classes come out and you look at them and you say, wow, good stuff here. Who's going to what? Is it a group? You sit down with your partner. How do you pick the classes? Yeah, so it's kind of become a holiday for us. When they announce, you know, vision registration is open, our world kind of comes to a halt. And we start, get with our teams and with us having two locations now, it's kind of a little bit of a balancing act, but our store leaders and our shop foremans really kind of help lead the force on that. And they are already kind of thinking about what classes each team member might need, where their struggles are, the opportunities that they have, and they all kind of collectively sit down and go over, hey, here's the classes that I would like to go to. What do you think? And they might sit down and look at them and go, you know, those are some really good classes, but this class over here is something that we've talked about in a one-on-one that you're really looking to kind of branch out to, say that that might be ADOS or hybrid or something like that. And you're really looking to gain some knowledge on that. So let's not forget about that. Do you think you should sit in on that class and And they'll be like, yeah, or I did see that one, but I really would like this one better. So we don't necessarily force anybody into a class, but we'll encourage them based off of conversations that we've had throughout the entire year and through one-on-ones and stuff like that, and really try to create a, a really good class structure for each other. But also we have so many team members that... We don't want them all in one class either, unless it's something that is a big opportunity for all of us. And we're like, hey, let's get all of our eyes and ears in here. That way we can all leave with something and then collaborate about what I picked up versus what you picked up and really take all of that collective knowledge and do something. Well, I just heard so many great things, not in the same class. And I heard, you know, in, in our one-on-one discussions about, you know, where the career is going, what value the, you add to the business. So I hear you're talking about store managers and their people. Do you and your partner, Josh, am I right, Josh? Yeah, Josh. Yep. Do you and Josh get together, look over the class choices, because you're really setting the direction of the vision for the entire company. I mean, if we're ever going to go specialized over here or there, you need to prep your people for that. So do you ever look at what they picked? We do. I I look every year. Josh as well. He'll have a little bit of influence on it. But honestly, we leave it up to our team. They know our vision. They know where we're going. And I really leave that final decision up to them. I may influence it slightly, but we really try to empower our staff to have the ability to go through and make those decisions that they feel are going to be best for them, maybe where they lack. Our store leaders are the ones that really know with our technicians and with the service advisors and stuff like that. 
we would possibly have more influence on a store leader than we would anybody else, making sure that if it's leadership driven, leadership's really big for us, making sure that you know our shop foremans have the leadership capabilities, our store managers have the capabilities to lead a team. And maybe that's where we'd have the most influence. But with the technicians and service advisors and other staff, we really kind of let their leaders really help influence. So if a technician came up to one of your managers and said, look, I did a hybrid class a couple of years ago, but you know, I really would love to know what they're talking about today. Is that an okay decision, even though the person did the class a couple of years ago? Oh, absolutely. I am like, I'll sit through the same class five times. Great point. I mean, I want you to get into that because Travis, I just came back from ASTE and talked to all my great friends who are trainers. And the thing that I love to kid with them about, I said, up till midnight, one o'clock, tweaking your class. (laughs) So they, they absolutely, they're always improving. Yes. And not only that, the message is different when you take it two or three times. And when I mean that, maybe the speaker has found a little bit different approach or the delivery is a little different, but look inward, look at the growth that you've had in yourself professionally, and maybe the delivery, you didn't take it the way that you're taking it now because you've grown professionally, your leadership abilities, your vulnerability that you've been able to to accept the message has changed. So by taking something year after year, yes, it does eventually get old, but you are always going to be able to pull information out of it. And especially on a technical side of things, with the advances that we're having, you could take the same hybrid class and they're going to continue to enhance that class year after year and bring the newest technology that has come out. Great point. Thanks for bringing that up. Hey, do you ever worry, you know, it's, it's, conferences have lounges and bars and events to go to and give me a little bit of Travis and Josh's rules of the road. (laughs) How's that work? Absolutely. The most important part is we have a brand. We have a brand of Honest Wrenches and we have a brand of who we are and how we present ourselves at any event, whether that is a local charity event, walking down the street in our town, or at a big training event, such as Vision High Tech Training. How we present ourselves is, is how people perceive us. And if we're not professional and we just think it's one big party, then that's how we're taken. So yes, we absolutely do have an image that we strive for. Do we allow our team to go out and have a good time? You betcha, that's what we go there for. We bust our butts all year long and we wanna go out and have a good time, but it is just a reminder be professional. Okay. People are going to say things that you may not like. That's okay. That's their opinion, not yours. And in this industry, people are very opinionated on how your business should be run or what needs to be done. And and likewise with training companies. I personally like all training companies. They're all out there for a reason. And I think that they make every single one of their shop owners and people that go through their training extremely successful. And a lot of people are very opinionated on that. And and I just kind of ride the center line. I think they're all extremely good. They all bring their own positives and I guess negatives, if you will. It's just an opinion side of thing. But I really try to train them on just being open and listening to people and not wanting to sit there and battle back. If you're sitting in a bar and you might have a few drinks under your belt, it's pretty easy to do that. <laughs> So it's okay working for Travis and Josh to go out and have a beer or something or a Coke and hang out with a bunch of people, but continue to monitor the fact that we're here representing our brand and we're professional. Try to show some restraint if possible. Now, if you stay up till four in the morning and your next class is at eight, now you got an issue with me, right? Yeah, we're at that point, we're not being professional and yeah. uh, we're not uh, holding up to who we say we are as Honest Wrenches and we're not delivering on what we said we were going to do when we came. Because if we stay up till, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning, we're not able to give the attention, one, to the person that's spending their time speaking to us and trying to teach us. And two, we're not doing ourselves any good. You know, one of the big things that I talk about is how grateful Josh and I am that our team is willing to take the time to come to vision, time away from their family, 
time away from their animals, time away from the shop. And to come down and get the training that they get, that means a lot to Josh and I. And as our store leaders and stuff like that continue to develop, it means a lot to them. And when you might have one team member that just really doesn't want to go, you know, that really kind of hurts them as much as it does us because we pour a lot of resources into allowing them and getting them to get there. If they don't take it seriously, it kind of goes against our MVP is what we call it, our mission, yeah. vision, and our yeah. purpose. Hey, look, if you earn your living in the automotive service aftermarket, Apex is for you. Now, if you attended Apex 2022, then you realize the incredible commitment that Apex has to the service professional shop owner and technician. Joe's Garage is your place to be with 10 working bays as you experience real live working conditions, along with exciting demonstrations and the latest equipment presented. Also, the best tech companies from tools and repair to management software had their latest and the greatest on display. You also attended technical business management training with the industry's best and brightest. Work is already underway to make next year's Apex 2023 even better than ever with more product demos, trending training, marketing, and the latest in business management training to help you grow your sales and profits. Remember, if you earn your living in the aftermarket, then Apex is the expo for you. Continue listening as we bring you the latest from Apex 2023. Save the date. October 31st through November 2nd, 2023. Hey, let's face it. Your shop management system is the single most important tool in your shop, period. Napa Tracks has made selecting the right shop management system easy by offering the industry's best, most comprehensive SMS. Now, it all starts when a local representative meets with you to learn about your business and how you need to run it. After all, it's your shop, so it's your choice. And having local representation is a huge plus. Customizing tracks to your business, whether you're a one-person shop or a large multi-bay or multi-location company, a representative consults with you to help optimize your shop's workflow, efficiency, and profitability. Tracks always has the flexibility to do business how you need to do it, which means it can also grow as your business grows. And unlike the other guys, we'll be there for you after installation with the best training and support in the business. Yes, a learning management system tailored to each role in your company. Simply put, Trax was designed and built for shop owners just like you. Visit us on the web at Napa Trax. That's N-A-P-A-T-R-A-C-S dot com. You know, life goes on. You brought up a great thing about, you know, family and animals if someone had a major family thing that was going on and they say, geez, Travis, I'm not going to make vision this year. The place is still closed and they're still not going. Uh, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Family first. You, yeah. you stay back and you take care of what you got to take care of. Got it. Um, vision will be here next year. Your family is more important. And that is exactly how we would handle that. Cool. Well, that's, that's the, that's the right Totally, 100% right. Everybody gets paid for their normal pay or salary while they're at Vision? Yep. So when we go to Vision, everybody gets to get paid. We roll through. We obviously don't pay for Saturday, Sunday, right? But they are paid for the time that we're gone. Saturday right. and Sunday, they're, they're just there on their time. But yeah, they do get a full week. Training, food, hotel is all paid for. Service advisors, critical that they go through training? Absolutely. That is the first touch of customer interaction. And if they're not trained, then we wonder why we quote unquote need more cars and we're not doing anything with the cars that we have and we're not doing anything with the rings that we get. <laughs> I have to tell you, I think service advisor training is the unsung training hole that we have in our industry. And yes. I think it's coming into its own, Travis. I think... A lot of shop owners, I finally got my guys in the shop to go and now I got to, you know, and, but yeah, I think if they're going to a conference and the smart conference providers today are making sure there's leadership training, CEO training, COO training, service advisor training, and you name the technician technology training, yeah, it's off the charts. Yeah. I think the industry, tell me if I'm right or wrong, is giving such incredible training topics reaching forward and we got to play in that sandbox even harder a hundred percent i agree with you a hundred percent on that i mean it's the training that these conferences like vision bring to the table the vetting process is incredible 
to see what you have to go through to be a trainer in that they're wanting to make sure that it's it's high quality content yeah. that's going to be delivered to the members. You look at the passion that I have and the majority of all the other shops out there of bringing their team to vision and how many resources they have to utilize in order to get people there. They want high quality training. Excellent. Okay. I've always been a big proponent that when you teach, you learn, will you ever bring your people back and swap, you know, do a lunch and learn and swap what they learned? I love it. I call it FTI, failure to implement. And really what that is, is we take the time to go to these events and we come back and we just go back to our same old day to day. And one thing that we really strive for, and I'm not saying that we're perfect, but we really strive to come back and have our teams collaborate together and teach each other what they learn. And sometimes what they learn is, is what they show in their feet movement, right? A lot of times they come back and say, I learned this, I learned this, I learned this, but no action is, is displayed. Sometimes the best teaching is watching somebody change instrumentally. And myself with some of our team members that have been with us for years now, just to watch their development is absolutely incredible. To watch them come back from a training event like Vision and see just the leaps and bounds, I would pay 10 times what it costs me to come to Vision to see that every time, just because it's so awesome to watch their development. So if somebody was just starting out saying, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm not 100% sure I could take the entire team. You know, I got eight. Yeah. What if I take three or four? What would you suggest to them as to who they would want to take? How would they rationalize that? Yeah, absolutely. If you're the leader of your shop, don't make that decision because then you're going to have people with hurt feelings. And there might be somebody that was told they had to go that really didn't want to go. And somebody sitting in the background that wasn't really willing to speak up, but was hoping that somebody would call their name. So my advice would be to just open it up to your team and say, hey, we've never been to Vision or maybe we are going to Vision and we've been there before. Unfortunately, I just can't take everybody this year. Is there anybody that just would feel like maybe they don't want to go and allow them to speak up without feeling forced to have to go? Now, on the flip side of that, what happens if everybody says they want to go? At that point, you got to kind of figure it out and make it work. You well, know? there's this thing called straws. You draw straws, right? <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> because... I really think it is. It's important that we all talk about developing our team. We all talk about training and we never want to tell them no. Now, what's in it for me, what's in it for you is I'm going to bring you to training Okay, that's what's in it for you. What's in it for me is you're going to take the knowledge that you've gained and apply it to our business. And maybe you have to take it a step further and have them, like we talked about a minute ago, teach the rest of the team and really, really spread that knowledge to everyone, whatever that looks like. But I would never recommend anybody to leave anybody out unless it's just absolutely economic, economically not doable. Or, hey, listen, I really can't believe I want to close the shop, so I'm going to try to work with a half crew for a few days. We'll start here next year. If it goes really well, we'll take the other half. Or they realize, Alternate. Or, or they realize the investment that they made, they should close. You told me, we come back, they make up the revenue. It's never an issue. And, and, yeah, but I it's, think... It's somebody's got to go, Travis, an owner and a few of his people have to go and come back. And then the light comes on. We can talk to her blue in the face sometimes and they just they don't get it. Well, I've said this a million times and I'll say it again. How many times have us owners gone to training and they come back and everybody's back to talking like, oh, what do we got coming back now? You know, so and so went to training again. What are they going to throw at us? You no longer get that when yeah. you bring the entire team because the excitement and the engagement that you get coming back, everybody gets coming back and they all come back fired up. And if you want to move the needle in your business, see what happens when you bring them all. Cause it's a, it's big. Let's talk about the power of networking. I've always said to people, if you're going to sit in a class, you should get the handle, the Twitter handle, the email of the person sitting next to you, right of you, front of you, back of you that was sitting in the lounge. And would you ever give business cards to your people? I mean, let's talk about how networking should happen and how powerful it is. 
Yeah, absolutely. Every one of our team members has business cards already. And that has its pros and its cons. We've been, you know, culprit of, you know, people trying to, you know, go after our team and stuff at training events and stuff like that. And that's, in my opinion, part of it. It's not something that I see as a as a business practice that can't um, we just I all follow. agree, Travis, that that is just something that shouldn't happen at any training event. Can there be an wait a minute? The, the let me see the eleventh commandment. Where is where's the dome that says you enter these walls and you just don't recruit? It's like it's like recruiting from a localized twenty group or something. It is, and it's very unfortunate. I just tend to look past it and say, you know, I guess I should have done a better job with that person. What can I do differently? Do I agree with it? I don't. Every single one of us business owners, every single one of us shops are doing everything that we can to provide a positive work environment and take the best possible care of our team as we possibly can. And when you're there investing in a training event like that, it really kind of hurts you when that happens. I mean, it, it does. And the only thing that you can do is sit and ponder on it or go, you know what? I'm never going to be that person. And I hope that they get what they need so they can have a, a good business because they're obviously struggling and I'll move on. As a little side note, let's just make a left turn here. Yeah. If that has happened to you, you get a chance to see what the counter offer is that that person is leaving for. And does that shock you? It doesn't. It's, I'm not one to talk bad or anything, right? You don't know what you don't know. And the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Sometimes it is though, but it's one of those things that that's a decision that they're going to have to make on our end. The, they were obviously disengaged in our culture and that's shame on us for allowing that to happen. And that's an opportunity for us to grow on. You just kind of nailed it. I mean, there's nothing like the learning curve that comes from losing what you believe is a key player that absolutely that, that, that is surviving in a, a high culture that you guys work MVP on all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Mission values, purpose. And uh, every once in a while, you just you get a sobering thing that happens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it happens to the best of us. And yeah. you know what? You take it as a learning moment. You don't get mad about it. It is what it is. Life goes on, right? People are going to come and go and who got you to where you are, aren't going to get you to where you're going in some cases. And that's just life. It's really, really hard when you have that much love and care for your team. And that happens to you. I mean, it really, really does tax you pretty hard, but it's, it's part of it. You have to learn how to handle it. Yeah. I want to make this point. We did not just cover these last three minutes to convince you not to bring your team to a conference. We didn't, but we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't want to talk openly about those kinds of things that can happen because it's not just going to a conference where we lose our people. We just don't. And I guess it can happen. And I just don't want anyone to think that they shouldn't invest in their people and in their training and in their business by totally. worrying what, by worrying about that. You shouldn't worry about it. You should be aware of it, but you shouldn't worry about it. It's, right. it's happened to me and I don't change anything. The ongoing joke is make sure that we're just branded to all get out so they know who to come find. And that's just kind of been an ongoing joke of us. Does it hurt? It does. But it also goes to show that we do our best to develop some really strong players and do our best to develop a really strong team. And it just makes us have to work that much harder to make sure that we keep them engaged yeah. and we keep taking great care of our people. And at that point, it is what it is. Most times, they come back and just tell us what's going on. Like, can you believe that they did this? I can't believe they had the audacity to reach out to me. In a lot of cases, what it does is it kind of turns the tables on the person that's going after them and it reduces their credibility a little bit that they're willing to do that because we have a really strong, strong culture within ourselves, but also the passion that I have for this industry, it makes it really, really hard for us to gain people because if i know who they are or where they're coming from i have to go to that shop owner and let them know unless they were released or something like that then at that point it is what it is but if they're actively working for somebody i'm not going to put them in a bad position and i'm just going to go straight to the source and just say hey here's what's going on and here's what i found out <laughs> Well, thank you. Thanks for all that great, great wisdom. By the way, I love your website. I love that 
team view. I mean, that you got to go to honestwrenchers.com and you got to see Travis and Josh and what all 25 some people standing yes. in line as the header on your website. I love what it says. I mean, it yes. the picture says a thousand words and, yes. and, I, and I, I love your, your slogans and everything that are there. Hey, it was last March. We did an episode on the inaugural general service technician academy that was at vision you and al right were on with me is yes. it going to be round two this year or in 2020 24 if i'm not giving out too many secrets it will be in the plans for round two and we are yeah. extremely excited the feedback that we got wow it was incredible to hear the owners, I mean, that reached out and some of the general service technicians that were in there and to see some of their survey results and stuff like that, it was really, really cool. And, and I knew that as soon as I started reading that and, and immediately had owners reaching out, thanking us for putting that on, I really knew that we struck a chord and that it was certainly something that our industry needed and knew right away that we were going to try to continue to enhance it and continue to put it on again this year. You know, what, what I'd like to know for especially the general service technicians, the young people that are joining our company, our, our industry, and it doesn't mean that they're young. I don't mean that. To, to they're young to the that. industry. They're yeah. young to the industry. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And when I think about surveying them, would it be cool to find out for everyone who was there back in March, if they're still gamefully employed either in the shop or the industry, because that could have been glue, that event. It could have kept, we were losing people disenchanted in the industry or in the place they chose. But if you come to vision and you see everything that's going on, but you're not necessarily in the kind of shop you think is your future, you yep. may look for another one that exemplifies what you were learning there. Did they stay exactly. in the industry or did they leave? You know? Yeah, I think that would be awesome. And, and really what that is, is a testament to the shop and the people that surround that shop. One big thing that I always say is if we're going to bring new people, whether they're young people or just new people to our industry, we can't tell them how much we hate the industry because you're not doing them any good. You're not doing anybody any good. The reality of it is, is we're in this industry because we're passionate about it and we have to be cheerleaders and we have to bring these people into the industry and allow them to fail, pick them up, dust them off, make sure it's okay, and then continue to guide them along the way. And the next time they fail, pick them back up and continue to dust them off. And that's how they're going to continue to grow and grow fast in this industry. It's when we bring them in and, wow, well, gosh, I, if I could do it again, I'd never get in this industry. Or we play the, the egotistical, can't believe these kids these days, you know, all of that stuff. That doesn't do our industry any good, and it doesn't bring any solutions to the shortages that we have in our industry. Thanks for that. You've come a long way since the shipping container. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, the one little storage unit and, uh, you know, just trying to make it along. <laughs> a little storage <laughs> unit. And, you know, yeah. Your story is great, how you met Josh and he, he needed some help on a, I think it was a break job. I'm trying to remember the It was, story. yes, it was a break yeah. job. Yep. Yeah, it was a break yep. job. And, yeah, you were going to school and this is a classic, classic story that needs to be, somebody's got to get this on videotape to have it forever, you know, locked in. But it was great catching up with you to talk about a vision that I, maybe six months away now, or maybe just a little bit more than that, but to get people planning on and taking their training investment to a whole new level and finding a budget of, there's a percent of sales is what, what you're investing in training for the entire company, technician, service advisors, and yourself as the, the CEO, man, we yeah. can learn something new every day as a leader and as an in, in, in individual who is driving the finances and the processes and, and the hiring of your company. You may not be doing it, but you have to, you cannot lead something you don't understand. And all, of the, and all of that, all of that training is so critical. So any other great, big, you know, secrets you can tell us about vision next year that, you know, is, is okay to talk about? Nothing right now. It will be signups will be coming out here in the next month or so, which is going to be really awesome. And the only thing that I can say is, you know, when you're talking about planning for vision, start planning right away. As soon as vision's over with start, uh, I have a savings account that I just transfer money into every single week. And we know about how much it's going to run us with everything. And we just transfer it over. And, and that way it's not 
taxing on us. And like I always say, Vision is one of the most inexpensive training events. It's incredible how inexpensive it is, in my opinion, for what you get. It's just, it's unreal. And you just plan for it all year long and build that anticipation with your team. And when opening day comes, like I said, it's a holiday. I mean, we just literally like, what are you choosing? What do you think? I don't know. I was going to do this, but I did it last year and I didn't get everything I wanted. So I'm going to do it again. And it's just a bunch of chirping going along. That's it's so cool. It's, I, it's a buzz. One of my it's a buzz. It is. Yes. Hey, hey is. I just had this wild thought. If you printed out the vision classes and you have yet to go to vision yourself, or you're really thinking of taking some of your people and you pass that around, put your initial next to a class you'd like to attend to your point earlier is ask them who wants to go, ask yeah. them what they'd like to take. And if you pass that around and let people realize that there's training like this available on a big national scale and look at the twinkle in their eye or look at what they selected and then incubate that. Hopefully somebody comes up to you and says, oh, Travis, this would be a hell of an opportunity. I know I'm a little deficient in this particular area. Man, can I benefit and so can the company if I go. Yep. And yep. To, to me, that would be almost like a staging opportunity to just lay it up and see what happens. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I mean, that's kind of what we do. Our team knows the process now. But it's creating vulnerability in yourself and yeah. not hiding from where we have the greatest opportunity, but facing where we have the greatest opportunity and really creating vulnerability around that. that we're not perfect people, far from it, actually. And we have to just look for ways to improve. And, and we do it through training and leadership and you know development and stuff like that. A great final word. Thank you. It was great catching up to you. Thank you for your great wisdom as it relates yeah. to taking your team division and what happens pre, during, and post. I got it right. Travis Troy, Honest Wrenches, Aikeny and Des Moines, Iowa. I think I got that right. Thanks for being Aikeny. here, my friend. Yes. Thank you, Carm.